Again, I'm here in my garage with my Teslarini. It's this Memorial Day weekend, and I'm about to head off to uh, the lake shore, Lake Michigan Lake Shore, to a campground called Hoffmaster. Lacey Baby and Gidget are already there, and um, I got off work and came home to grab a few things, which um, are all taken care of, and now I'm heading out there. It's only about 40 miles away or something, although I have to pick up pizza on the way there. But anyway, first time Tesla uh, will be on a camping trip. We uh, usually take um, our SUV um, for that purpose, but yeah. So the stuff that I have, um, just, you know, extra stuff that was forgotten. And then uh, a radio flyer, which fits lengthwise in the back of the Model S for anybody who was wondering. And also you can take the uh, the handle off and then uh, you don't have to like jerry-rig it so much. And uh, that's basically it. Basically uh, Lacey packed everything else so I'm about to head out. Yeah. This is really hard to do with one hand. So I'm already at uh, what am I at? 92%. So that should be plenty. Let's move on. Or move out or whatever. Okay, we are, well, I say we, but it's actually me on our way. Got 38 miles and we should trip Trip planner says we should get there with 71% left. I'm at 88% right now. Not too bad. Weather's good. So, um, 73 degrees. Uh, no wet conditions or anything like that. So it should be pretty smooth sailing. Probably hover hover around 300 watt hours per mile or something like that. Maybe 315. Yeah. And. Um, just enjoy the scenery. I haven't been on a trip for a while. I mean, the last thing I did was um, driving to a neighboring town to have uh, my electric uh, chainsaw looked at. And that's it. So it's good to be driving the driving the Tesla. So yeah. It's kind of late, it's 5.30, so it definitely didn't get an early start, but oh well. It Because we're so far north, um, it'll still be light by like 9.30 tonight, so no shortage of daylight right now. Traffic. But with autopilot. <laughs> More traffic. Still can use autopilot though. So the problem is... Okay, so I have to go to the pizza place here and apparently there's like this traffic jam around this part of town. And then I saw this, so I turned around but then I found out there's no outlet. You can't actually cross that creek right there. So I came back and still says only three minutes so I don't know. It's moving. I guess it'll work. Pizza's calling. Finally got the pizza. There it is. Keeping it warm. And now we gotta go to the campsite. So, making progress. It was ridiculously hard getting here to the pizza place because there's a fair in this little town. And they shut down a portion of the main road, which you can't really go around because there's like rivers and stuff around here. So I've spent the last 20 minutes trying to travel the last mile. It's really crazy. Oh. And now it's telling me I just took another wrong turn. It told me to go up the street a little bit and then back down. Now it's telling me I don't have to. Also, for some reason, my phone is getting no service, so... Um, that's kind of weird, too. Alright, well, we'll see if this road works. Alright, should be a straight shot on this road. 
Ah, the sounds of nature. Oh, getting older. So we are here at a campground in West Michigan called Hoffmaster, which is on the uh, shoreline of uh, Lake Michigan, the big lake. Um, I took the Tesla out here. Uh, again, it wasn't hmm, a little bit of rain. It wasn't very far. I think it was about 40 miles or something like that. So not too much of a drive, um, except it was a holiday weekend. So uh, going out of town, which is what everybody else was doing, is kind of a pain. Um, but anyway, as far as the Tesla goes, it did uh, perfect. I had charged it up Friday morning to, I think, 95% or 90, I forget. I didn't want to do it up to 100. I try to limit that to when I really need tons of range. Um, and I was somewhere in the um, in the low 300s of uh, kilowatt hours, mostly freeway driving. So, um, you know, I think the speed limit is like 75 or something like that. Um, high rate of speed, so a little more um, energy use than, you know, lower speed freeways or highways. But anyway, very uneventful. Um, used autopilot, um, hardware one, which is what I have. Uh, definitely convenient. Still like it for when there's a little bit of you know, cars starting to um, pile up, not pile up, but uh, higher car density, I guess. And um, also just monotonous areas or whatever. So it really integrates quite smoothly, just kind of off and on and off when you need it, when you don't need it. It's kind of like augmented driving, um, I guess is a good way to put it. So that's pretty cool. And uh, the campsites here have power. They have a 50 amp as well as a regular plug. I don't have the 50 amp conversion adapter, so I couldn't use that for the car, but, and I actually didn't need to plug in any way. I think I got here about 68%. Plenty of charge to go back home, but, you know, um, I had the uh, mobile connector, so I was like, eh, why not plug in? It's kind of fun to do that. So it was charging, um, I think it took, I charged it up to 90%, and uh, that took about 20 hours or something like that. <laughs> It was pretty long, but whatever. It's still fun. Now we have a little extra um, juice, which I don't really need. I think that might be something that people uh, don't really f realize is an option when you have an electric vehicle is you can charge, you know, for sure overnight, which that's, I mean, if you go to a campground, you're gonna be there overnight, but so you could no problem take uh, a, a Tesla um, or another electric vehicle where you might extend most of your range getting to your destination, um, but what, once you're at one of these sites, it's if you have the right adapter and they're all available on Tesla's website. You know, it's no problem going into some back country where there aren't superchargers and there aren't conventional chargers. So that's actually an infrastructure in the recreation realm that's already present. Um, and you could go across significant geographical areas from campsite to campsite. Uh, if there's no chargers between it, I guess you're limited by the capacity of your battery. So in my case, uh, we'd have to do it like every 200 miles or something like that. But still makes it possible to use uh, no gasoline fuel and um, 
you know, get out there into the into the outside, which is just um, super pretty. Now, aside from the range, it definitely would have been nice to have the uh, Model X for this excursion. We actually took two cars. So my wife drive our, our drove our SUV, which is a 2007 Acadia, bef up Friday because I was still working, and I was going to come after that. And we wouldn't be able to fit all that stuff into the S um, by any stretch, unless. I mean, maybe if we had uh, a, car a cargo rack on the top, um, maybe. But so, yeah, a trip like this, we it's it definitely be nice to have an X for um, these types of things. And um, it's not uncommon. It's not like we do this only once a year. We like doing this. So uh, we'll see what the future holds in regards to the X. If I switch cars, if I trade in the S, the S might become my X when I purchase an X. Day, Monday, it's one o'clock right now, and uh, we're on our way back home. Um, I'm in the Tesla by myself, and autopilot is driving me along. Yeah, so really no events with the car. Um, yeah, we had too many cars at the campsite, so there was, I wasn't sure if I was going to need to go take the Tesla park it somewhere else overnight but I really didn't want to do that and we didn't end up having to so that's nice um, and it's covered in pine tree pollen or dust or something so definitely needs a wash <clears throat> didn't realize pine trees shed that much um, yeah but so let's see um, yeah so I slow charged up to uh, 90 percent and then um, oh I had, to, I had to do an errand this morning I had to go to a store so I left with about 85 percent I think I don't know maybe 84 and now I'm at 68 uh, but I'm halfway home so no range issues whatsoever here and uh, it's my first time charging at a campsite so it would be kind of nice to have um, like a 110 or 120 volt outlet to use like household things and stuff. Maybe a waffle maker. I don't know. Uh, just that sort of thing. But um, I remember a discussion that I can't remember if it was Musk or J.B. Straubel had about Having. Actually, it was in context to using the Tesla battery as a backup for home power. And the problem from their perspective was that if you add um, the hardware and capacity to output electricity, um, it just adds another... There's more chances for electrical error and um, as a result overheating and fire hazards and that kind of thing and shorting or, or whatever just damage i mean of course it could be done safely and all that kind of stuff but they just decided to skip it for now that's that was the reason they said so all that to say i guess if, if you add additional components and outlets and stuff like that uh, there's always a slight slight more potential probability for something to go wrong and then damage to come to the car or structures around it so best to minimize that especially right now when every tesla fire uh, ends up in the headlines it's really nice um it's uh sunny now and 70s so really nice memorial day weekend um yeah pretty tired
All right, I just got home and uh, I was fiddling with some settings and I just noticed something. The cabin overheat protection, I didn't realize that that was uh, something you could actually turn on or off. So I guess that's good if your battery is about to die or something like that, but um, I'm definitely leaving it on. Um, like I had said, uh, I think I tweeted or Instagram something, it's almost been hot enough here uh, where the car is getting up to the limit temperature, which I believe is 105 Fahrenheit. So um, we'll see how that works this summer.